Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, uh, a disturbing book that took me completely by surprise, 1974 by David Peace. Now, as viewers of the channel will know, I'm doing a project at the moment where I'm reading disturbing books that were recommended to me by viewers. Uh, I've come up with this with this list, most of which came from comments on a review of a book I did called Notice by Heather Lewis. Um, but some some have come up on other videos as well where I've talked about disturbing books. And I've got this long list of disturbing books that I'm gradually working my way through. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is to, to try and understand, I guess, for myself, um, what draws me to disturbing books but also what different kinds of disturbing books are there out there and, and what is it that I personally find particularly disturbing. Um, so going through this list um, and you know planning to read disturbing books allows me to prepare myself for them um, and what I found is that that many of the books I've read off this list whilst I may have thought they were good books were not necessarily books that I personally found particularly disturbing and I'm going to come back at, at some point and do a video where I talk a bit a bit more about that and about you know what I particularly find disturbing and and different types of disturbing book um, but yeah this whole this whole process has been about me you know getting recommendations constructing a list and then reading the books from that list and that means when I go into these books I expect them to be disturbing so when I read a book that's not on that list, uh, that I just kind of randomly plucked off the shelves, um, and it's incredibly disturbing, it kind of takes me by surprise, and that's definitely what happened with, with this book, 1974. Um, so it's the first book in a series that is known as the, the Red Riding Quartet. So there are four books in the series, each set in, in different years. So 1974 is the first one, then I think it's 1977, then 1980, and so on. I can't remember. I think it might be... I want to say 1984, but that sounds wrong. I can't remember what the, the fourth book is. Um, and these books are set in West Yorkshire in the UK um, and are very much kind of rooted in their, their time. And my understanding is, you know, clearly I've only read the first book so far. My understanding is there are connections between the books, but they don't necessarily have, you know, like the same central character and things like that. Um so I knew that this was a, you know, well-respected crime novel. I knew that it was supposed to have, you know, a really good sense of place to give a good, accurate depiction of, of life in the in the UK, and particularly in the north of the UK in the 70s. And that was kind of all I, all I really knew about it going into it. What I found was a book that right from the start was incredibly disturbing, incredibly bleak, really troubling, and, and has, has, you know, I finished it over the weekend... Uh, I'm filming this on the Monday, but I still feel slightly shaken from it. And, and it put me in a, a bit of a funk when I finished it. I had to deliberately read something more cheerful um, afterwards to, to lift myself out of that, because it's a really incredibly dark book. Um, it reminded me a lot of a series of books I've talked about on the channel. Um, I did a video review of the first one and then did a review a, a video where I talked about the whole series. That's the Factory series by Derek Raymond, which is a series of um, British crime novels from, I think, from the like, late 70s and, and through the 80s, um, which again are very, very dark. And I don't know if... Um, I don't know if David Peace is, is familiar with these books, but there's definitely some similarities in their their tone, really. Um, so let me tell you let me tell you what the book's about. So the central character is a guy called Eddie Dunford, who's a crime reporter for um, a newspaper in, in Yorkshire, and he's someone who's who's kind of moved around the country. He's from that area originally, but he's gone down to London and worked in you know kind of London papers for a while, and lived in Brighton, which funnily enough is is close to me, um, for a while as well. And he's now gone back up north. Um, and he's investigating uh, or reporting on this series of disappearances of, of young girls, like 10 year old girls who've, who've disappeared. Um, and I'm not going to get, you know, I, people who watch my videos know I don't go, I, I don't go into the details of what happens in books. I really try and avoid that. But as you can imagine, you know, it's about the, the investigation into these disappearances um, and about the, you know, the local population and the, you know particularly some of the more powerful people in the in the local population um, and you know how this all knits together um, and 
common with um, common with a lot of books like this. So, so you see this as a as a theme again and again in you know this kind of crime fiction. There's a lot in this book about corruption, um, about corrupt people in power, and about people abusing their power to um, you know to the disadvantage of of the less well off and, and innocent people in, in society. And that's really, you know, if, if I was to pick out a central theme of the book, that, that's what it's about. Um, but the way it's told is just, it, it never feels like a trope. So, so that is, you know, kind of a trope of, of crime fiction. Um, but it never feels like a trope in this book. It's very skillfully written. And, and the writing in, indeed is one of the, the, the standout parts of the book. So I'm not somebody who normally goes on about pro styles and stuff like that i'm not smart enough for that but but this book is is written in a really interesting way it's the the dialogue and, and just the writing in general is very stripped down um really sparse um you know you get whole pages where it's just you know dialogue between two characters with with no surrounding prose at all um and some sequences which are almost like kind of stream of consciousness sequences from the from the main character um and the other thing that really comes through in this book is just this overwhelming sense of, of bleakness. So there's there's the sense of the kind of pov- poverty of, of the north of England um, and the, the, the huge division between the, the haves and the haves nots. Um, but there's also just this, this complete lack of respect and regard for the poorer people in society and the, and the disadvantage in society from both people in power, but also like, you know, there's there's a lot in this book about police corruption and things like that as well. And um, some of the brutality that's kind of meted out by police officers in this book to, to you know, everyday people um, is, is really horrific. And what makes it all even darker is that, that Eddie, the central character, is, is, you know, no angel himself. He's there's some very dark stuff that he gets involved in. Um, there's some horrible stuff that happens to him as a character, but he's also he also does some terrible things through the course of the book. And it's just it's almost overwhelmingly bleak. I felt that you know I've, I've compared it to um, to the Factory series, and those books I found you know really difficult for the same reason in that there's just kind of a hopelessness to them. Um, and you get it's similar to in the factory series that you know the detective at the heart of those just seems completely determined to to get justice for the victims um you know the victims of the crimes he's investigating eddie in this book wants to uncover the truth he wants to get to the bottom of what's happening but a lot of the time i felt like his his desire to do that was not motivated by selflessness he was not trying to get justice for the victims necessarily. He's trying to make his name as a as a reporter. A lot of it is about you know there's a lot of stuff in this book about him comparing himself to another reporter in particular, and um, you know this competition, this rivalry between them, um, and it, it, all of that combines to to being one of the most hopeless, dark disturbing books I've read for a long time um you really feel um a connection with the characters um you feel their pain you know you get that you get you know bereaved parents and things like that um as well as um you know as well as as, as Eddie and all the stuff that happens to him um so yeah an, an incredibly bleak and disturbing book and I think I found it all the more disturbing because I wasn't I wasn't expecting it I wasn't prepared for it I knew it was going to be you know I expected it to be a bit dark maybe but not nearly as bad as it was um so yes a, a very interesting book I definitely recommend it I'll definitely be reading the rest in the series um but I might take them at a, um, at a slow pace because I'm not sure I could um I could stand um such a, a degree of darkness again so soon after the first one and indeed people have said that the books get worse as they go on um, in terms of how dark they are 
Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. A, bu- a book that is also quite dark, but not definitely not as dark as, as 1974. Uh, Blood Sugar by Daniel Krauss, which has this fantastic, um, slightly saucy cover from Hard Crazed Crime. So this is about a, um, a kind of loner guy who lives on the outskirts of a town um, and his involvement with the, the kind of youthful population of that town. Um, so it definitely goes to some, some dark places, but it's a, it's a very entertaining and interesting book as well. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, let me know if you've read uh, any David Peace books, particularly the Red Riding ones. Um, as I say, I was I was really amazed by how disturbing this book was. Uh, but it is also, you know, it's very well written, and that's you know that's one of the reasons why it's so effective, I guess. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've read any of them and what you thought of them. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Jurya.